My dream for ITG is to become a multinational IT consulting firm, delivering value to its customers through the use of emerging technologies. The reality is we live in a world that is very dynamic, that's very demanding, and what we need to, to provide is ways for our customers to be able to adapt to these changes, to be able to provide better services. And, you know, that was the whole trigger of, uh, of doing what we do. The dream for ITG is to become a regional company. And that region is the Southeast Asian region. So for ITG Malaysia, we're expecting to grow our team bigger. So uh, we are expecting to venture together with all the regions and with our client as well. So we grow with our client and uh, we co-create the, together. Singapore being a multi-racial uh, country, we have Indians, we have Malay, we have Chinese, we have uh, Caucasian. I have a big responsibility to help ITG Singapore to grow uh, bigger. And I hope to ensure that the task given to me to help ITG Group to grow even bigger. Indonesia is the largest country in ASEAN and one of the fastest growing economy. That is why having the right technology to help Indonesia to live forward is essential. We wanted to contribute and participate in positive impact in Indonesia growth and future. At the heart of ITG's business are its customers. And when we talk about people, it's the customers of our customers. And it's really up to us to be able to provide them with the right solutions and the right services so that they can help people. So at the end of the day, the heart of what we do is impacting the lives of people. Venture Together is a call for the employees to work with the intention of co-creating solutions. We live in a very interconnected world and it's not anymore that you're the client and I'm the service provider. You have your role and I have mine and we'll stick to that. By adding together, it emphasizes that the journey is not a separate attempt, but it is to get everyone on board and co-create value. It's only with working together, venturing together, uh, can we really achieve what we set out to achieve. To work alongside together so that its employees, its top management, its customers would be able to maximize the use of technology and support their growth. Venture together. Ichi Chen Mari Kita. Let's venture together. Let's venture together. Hi there. Welcome to the Innovation in ASEAN, use cases of how the right DB resulted in the right DX. Uh, just making sure that you're in the right uh, Postgres vision talk. Uh, my name is Vijay Africa, and uh, thanks for spending the next 45 minutes with us. Now, before anything else, we wanted to make a special call out and special shout out to all the frontliners in, in the world. Um, thank you very much for your service. Thank you very much for your sacrifice. Uh, you basically risk life and limb on a daily basis just so we can live our lives on, on a daily basis. So we're very grateful, very appreciative. And um, on behalf of the whole ITG organization, thank you very much. Shashini, terima kasih, maraming salamat. Okay, l let me do a quick introduction uh, of myself. My name is VJ Africa. Uh, my day job consists mainly of uh, managing the Singapore and Malaysia operations of ITG. Uh, I also uh, serve as the Chief Technology Officer um, for IT and Business Solutions. Now, I, I wear many hats uh, in terms of uh, technology as well as entrepreneurship. I am a, a huge startup fan, a huge technology fan, fascinated about uh, technology's impact on people. And, you know, when we talk about people, uh, also a big advocate of organization and, and change. So I, I view myself as an organization and change driver. My personal mantra, my personal advocacy is tech for good, tech for all. Uh, I believe strongly that, again, technology used for, for the right reasons 
benefits everyone um, in the right way. Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur, was once hesitant uh, to jump into entrepreneurship, but um, again, big fan of startups. So that that's you know entrepreneurship at its best. Uh, a graduate of uh, the information uh, systems as well as uh, master's degree in international management. But more than anything else, I'm I'm a citizen of the world and currently a prisoner at my home <laughs> because of the whole work from home uh, situation. But a happy prisoner for for that matter. Uh, and speaking of home, let's let's quickly um, talk about Southeast Asia, and and there is a reason why we, you know we're very excited about the territory that we're in. Um, but just before I jump into that, uh, I'll spend the next couple of minutes just giving you a a quick backdrop uh, of essentially a quick backdrop of the use cases that that we'll be sharing with you. Now we want to talk about Southeast Asia as a region. But we also want to talk about this phenomenon called uh, the infinite game or the infinite mindset. Um, and we'll, we'll share bits and pieces of why that's such a, a, an exciting and uh, almost like a perfect storm for us. So in, in terms of uh, Southeast Asia, so first and foremost, um, and, and we like to show this particular slide because it illustrates our, our footprint in terms of the region, which we call our home. Um, it's, it consists of 10 countries. The, the actual ASEAN region consists of 10 countries, around 668 million in terms of population, very young population, uh, average age of 30 years old. So I'm just roughly top of the top of that average. Um, it is seen to be the, soon enough, will be the fourth largest economy after the US, China, and the European Union, um, and has an amazing uh, GDP of around 2.7. 2.8 trillion US dollars. It is home to a lot of SMEs, but it is also home to a lot of massive enterprises. And you'll see later on that we, we actually have uh, amazing use cases, amazing customer references that, that uh, constitute those different large enterprises. Now, one of the things that I kid around when I talk about ASEAN is that we are home to so many uh, problems, so many issues, so many concerns. But that's actually that actually translates to uh, we are home to many opportunities. And again, we're very excited. Uh, we're very thrilled to to call Southeast Asia our home. Um, it's dynamic. It, it's exciting. And um, you know, again, we're very excited. We're very thrilled to to, to be operating in this region. So that's just one lens. The other lens that we wanted to share with you is Infinite Game. And, and, and this, this was a concept that was, uh, I think was started or at least popularized by Simon Sinek. And um, what's very interesting here is, uh, okay, first and foremost, I'll share just some quick thoughts about it. I'm not going to ask you not to buy the book. Uh, I, it's, it's great reading. It, it's even a greater principle, but I'll share some bits and pieces. Uh, and then I'll tie it all together, why the use cases that we'll share with you, um, again, make that perfect storm of the, the territory, the, ge the geography, as well as what's really happening out there. So first and foremost, business is not a finite game. Uh, and I'll, I'll use, just to quickly define a finite game, I'll, I'll use basketball uh, as, as a quick example. Uh, that's easy for me, close to my heart, being a Filipino. Um, so a finite game, uh, for those that are not familiar, or even for those that are familiar, just a quick refresh, there's a very agreed upon set of rules. There's a start and stop time. For, for professional basketball, it's 12 minute uh, quarters. Um, very defined as well in terms of how to score a point. So, you know, a field goal is two points, three point shot is three points, and, and of course free throws and everything else. So very defined in terms of how you score a point, more important is that there is a very well-defined set of rules that decide who wins. So that's basketball, that's a finite game. Um, very clear who wins, who loses, very clear what the rules are. Now, business is not that. Business, there is no fixed time frame. You know, we don't play in quarters, we don't play in halves. Um, 
there, also, there is also no agreed way of keeping score. Now, this is a very interesting concept because a number of organizations, companies, they would like to say, oh, we're top, we're the biggest. Oh, and by the way, as a side, a uh, bit of a spoiler, we'll be talking about a lot of large organizations later on. But the reality is there, there is no defined set of rules. Um, you can actually choose to be the best in something. You just define what that metric will be. And there is no possibility of winning. So imagine that concept. It, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting concept. Uh, one of my good friends, when I started in entrepreneurship, told me the, num the number one rule in business is to stay in business. And the infinite game or business is not a finite game. So you need to stay in the game as long as possible. Now, if, if, if I were to go to the next slide, uh, which basically just gives you different mindset practices, right? Just cause, building a trust, uh, building a trusting team, a worthy rival, existential flexibility, the courage to lead. These are different mindset practices. Uh, and what we are really hoping for is that when we talk about uh, the different use cases, you'll see that in each of those examples, you will see that the organizations that we talk about would have you know, exhibited some of that, some of those practices, whether it was a reflection of, um, you know, courage to lead, which is to, to just be different, um, whether it was trying to peg itself against a worthy rival. Um, these are all different practices uh, that you'll hopefully see when we talk about the, the different um, use cases. So amazing dynamic geography, this infinite mindset, again, a perfect storm for us. So as we go into the different use cases, we hope you'll, you'll, you'll see that, um, you'll see examples and snippets of, uh, of this mindset, as well as, again, how amazing this, this geography is. Now, one quick disclaimer is in, in the interest of, uh, of NDAs and stuff like that, we cannot call out the customer's name in, in any of the use cases, but, we will do to the best of our ability to share a lot of information. You'll figure out who these guys are. Um, and, but the, the key thing there, what are the takeaways? You know, their, their backstory, what triggered the uh, transformation initiative, uh, what are some of the challenges, and you know, what are the results? And um, of course, spoiler alert again, amazing results from large, corporations, large, large enterprises. Okay, so uh, let me quickly jump in to the different use cases. And we'll start off with uh, use cases out of the Philippines. So the first use case, uh, we'll talk about a utility company. And uh, this customer is an electric uh, power distribution company in the Philippines. It is Metro Manila's only electric power distributor and holds the power distribution franchise for 22 cities and 89 municipalities. So that, that, that's, that's a lot of geography, including the whole of the National Capital Region or the NCR and the exurbs that form Mega Manila. The direction of the customer uh, was to find an alternative solution for their legacy or existing legacy databases, a couple of reasons. Number one was, you know, cut down the cost, um, improve the application as, as well as uh, uh, the application and the database performance, as well as avoid uh, vendor lock-in. So ITG helped the customer um, by first conducting a, a proof of concept, a POC activity. Uh, and the objective there was to test you know, migration quality, database performance, uh, as well as their integration to their reporting and, and visualization tools. And part of that whole activity was really to compare EDB Postgres uh, to Oracle as well as Microsoft uh, SQL Server. So here's uh, a bit of sharing. It took us a while to finish the activity because we had to migrate their 32 terabyte that's 32, 32 TBs of historical data from their collection, build, revenue, and outstanding balance. 
The, char the challenging part of, of this whole activity was, you know, migrating several or Oracle PL SQL codes from Oracle to EDB Postgres. And our DBA basically needed to read it line by line to ensure that Oracle uh, compatibility feature of EDB was working. Here's another side note. The EDB migration portal didn't exist at that time uh, when we did the POC. So another shout out here, uh, this time for the Enterprise DB team for launching the EDB migration portal. This tool is awesome. And I think I'm quoting uh, one of our regional technology managers, Dennis, for that. Um, this is a web-based service where you can instantly upload your database schemas for assessment in, in just a few minutes. And you can easily migrate your database from Oracle to EDB Postgres. Um, some other bits and pieces here that I'd like to share is that uh, this organization has 33% annual growth rate in terms of sub subscription. So it's, it's not a one-off. Uh, they're constantly growing, constantly adding um, more uh, licenses, more EDB uh, subscriptions. I, again, I just want to highlight the cost savings that have taken place. 89% in terms of CapEx and 48% in terms of OpEx. You know, the, the, you, you cannot um, discount any of that. It's, it's just really an amazing result. So our next use case um, takes us back uh, to a bit of history. And um, still in the Philippines, but this time in, in, in the banking sector, so this customer uh, is a government-owned banking institution started back in 1916, July 22nd of 1916, and it is headquartered in Manila. The primary mandate uh, of this bank was to provide financial services to Philippine industry and ag agriculture and support the government's economic development effort. Um, so 1916, World War I was then raging in Europe, uh, and the war generated huge demand for the country's major exports, namely sugar, copra, coconut oil, manila hemp, and tobacco. So the bank now has a uh, total domestic footprint of 713 branches and more than 1,400 ATM machines strategically located nationwide. So let's talk about the journey. So the, the direction of the customer uh, was to use an open source solution as part of their DX journey. So they made a decision to experiment um, the open source solution of the application Express using uh, RHEL, Red Hat JBoss EAP, and of course, EDB Postgres for the main mainframe core banking system. Um, and this, was, this wasn't implemented uh, at that point in time by Fidelity National Information Service or FIS on the environment. Um, as a quick note, FIS is an American company on the Fortune 500 list, which offers an array of financial products and services. This bank, this customer together with FIS embarked on making that first leap of implementing open source technology. So I, ITG working with, uh, working closely with the, cus with the customer provided different solutions on, on their digital transformation journey. And adopting EDB Postgres was one of the historical events that, that took place in that journey. So ITG helped the customer design and implement EDB high availability architecture for their Express application. Um, we were also able to help them set up uh, the Postgres Enterprise Manager. Uh, and this is a database management tool which combines monitoring, alerting and tuning. So the customer can monitor multiple databases uh, using one database dashboard using this tool. Um, currently there are five applications running on top of EDB Postgres uh, database. Uh, and the great news is they have several applications lined up to use EDB Postgres for their mission critical applications. Um, this last piece of fact uh, is, is something we're very excited about is that Currently, this customer has 89% annual growth rate in terms of subscriptions. Uh, some other things that we want to share is that uh, from a 
costings, cost savings perspective, from a CapEx standpoint, there's 92% cost savings. How crazy is that? From an OPEX perspective, 63%. Again, really crazy numbers and just massive savings for, for a massive customer. Let's jump to our last use case um, for the Philippines. Uh, and it's for stock exchange. So the, the customer uh, that we're, we're gonna talk about now is the National Stock Exchange of the Philippines. And um, exchange was created in 1992 uh, from merger of two major trading companies. Um, and aside from being one of the major stock exchanges in Southeast Asia, it is also one, one of the, you know, I think I believe the first and the longest one that's that's been operating uh, since 1927. So the customer selected Nasdaq as its new service provider for the new trading system uh, back in 2014. Nasdaq deployed its Xtreme trading system (XTS) to replace the NSC trading system that was provided by the NYSE or New York Stock Exchange Euronext Technologies (SAS). The new trading system uh, was being developed with enhanced trading capacity and increased risk management parameters in line with the company's overall strategy of introducing more products and more services to the market. The new trading system uh, using post, uh, Postgres SQL, um, that, that basically triggered why the customer looked for a partner uh, that could provide support and services for their EDB Postgres requirements. Um, so we were very fortunate uh, that we that we jumped in uh, and helped the customer in evaluating and doing business requirements. And uh, ITG, together with with partners, created the database design and architecture to support the application requirement. We implemented high availability solutions using EDB failover manager uh, and backup and recovery tool uh, Bart. Uh, we also provided training and enablement uh, for this customer. Uh, and, and we continuously provide proactive uh, database support and maintenance as, as well as regular product updates. So, um, you know, the relationship keeps on going. Um, very important bit of information here is that having EDB Postgres as the back end of XTS, the extreme trading system, has drastically improved the trading capacity and achieved database stability. Now, I want to share a bit of information that we are extremely, extremely proud, proud of. Since 2014, no single ticket, not a single issue was ever raised uh, with this deployment. So it's 2014, so more than six, yeah, more, more or less six years, not a single issue. Again, it speaks of, uh, of a lot of things, the technology, the people who worked behind it or who worked to build it, um, and I guess the relationship, it's, it's, it's just rock solid. So a great, uh, great piece of information to share with everyone. All right, jumping from the Philippines to Indonesia, and um, I think I mentioned earlier, we, we, you know, we like big, <laughs> so now we'll talk about the largest state-owned bank uh, in Indonesia. So biggest state-owned bank in Indonesia. Um, they have multiple subsidiaries under them to cater to you know, specific markets, insurance, lending, uh, Syria. Um, being state-owned in the highly regulated industries, such as banking, um, essentially it mandates them to have very high compliance, uh, as well as maintain proper procedures. Here's the thing though, uh, they also need to be agile and flexible enough to stay competitive in, in, this, in this highly dynamic industry, uh, the very dynamic landscape. But again, there is that balance that uh, they need to meet. And the, the, the whole uh, essence of their di digital transformation journey was to carry out several innovations to help them stay ahead in the competition 
but still comply with mandatory regulations. So a big ask. Um, the requirement brought them to uh, EDB Postgres uh, advanced server, where EPAS helped them to support their innovation, while at the same time providing substantial cost optimization. Uh, another benefit for them using EPAS is, you know, it helped them provide their projects with different options of database selection, uh, thus reducing their vendor lock-in um, or dependencies. Their projects can choose, you know, the right database for the right requirements at the right cost. So I like the sound of that, you know, right database for the right requirements at the right cost. And because it's, because as part of uh, the project responsibilities, again, talking about cost, obviously they need, need they needed to maintain cost well within project budget. So there have been several collaborations between ITG and, and, and partners, uh, as well as the customer to find the right requirements for their projects. Uh, you know, and, and since they have very high standards for these projects, we needed to work together to come up with with the following you know, architecture to help them cater to their requirements for, for a couple of their projects. Uh, call out to, to the customer team and the management who have been very supportive. Uh, and mind you, they had the right mindset. Uh, they expanded their EPAS usage to several other projects. Cool, let's now talk about uh, the next use case, which is a foreign exchange bank uh, for MSMEs. So uh, the customer is a privately owned bank um, that used to handle a very niche, very specific consumer segment um, where other banks were not yet focusing on. So at, at as, time, as time went by, other banks started uh, entering that that market, that niche market, niche market, and um, the customer then was forced and, and had to evolve to, flex, uh, to flexibly adapt to the new situation. Um, forced to change their mindset, uh, and they, in kudos to them, they were one of the first banks that converted the normal conventional conventional banking experience. To a more personalized service, and, and this was shown in how they design their branches uh, interior, uh, and also change the flow of how their teller would be able to provide a, a more personalized banking experience. So, a bit of a bit of um, context in terms of their digital transformation journey, um, you know, and, and they've been innovating since then. So one of their most successful initiatives was to start a branchless banking mobile application that doesn't require their end customer to go to a branch just to open an account. So it took away the, the, the hassles, the inconvenience of going to a bank, filling up a bunch of forms just to open an account. And, and they were the first in Indonesia to pioneer uh, this type of, of model. And one of the examples for the they ended up being an example for the re regulatory board to, to, to pave a new, uh, a new set of regulations for this type of, of again, a banking model. Uh, since then, they have gained a lot of consumer accounts. Uh, all of them, you know, many or if not most of them, utilizing the branch, branchless banking application. Now, ITG has worked with them on, on providing several solutions to help them enable their you know, their DX, as well as their uh, enterprise Postgres uh, SQL advanced server uh, was one of them. Uh, as one of their, their the main component applications uh, in allowing uh, Postgres uh, SQL is one of the database options. So together, uh, we're able to provide robust, robust database solutions. Um, and, you know, we're very proud to say that the database is holds a very important role uh, in the end customer um, to be able to access uh, branchless banking uh, application. So their team, and we, we love to say thanks to, to, to our customers, their team and management were very innovative, very growth centric. They had the right mindset, mind you, and they were open for options and they were willing to take 
calculated risks for innovating. Uh, and we are very, very proud to say and very excited to say that they're one of the best teams that we've ever worked with. Alrighty, so I think that's, that makes it five. We're down to our last use case. Uh, still a bank, we like Max. Um, so this is uh, a customer we've been working uh, with since 2010, so 10 years. Um, the customer is known as the biggest consumer bank in Indonesia. Uh, this is also why they need to keep innovating to be able to cater uh, the demand of their customers. Very well structured, very well managed and structured for innovation and um, very much aligned for continuous improvement. You know, the underlying thing there is, you know, they have the right mindset. Their initial requirements uh, was to have alternative database vendor options. And they preferred open source uh, based, um, based on the initiatives uh, that they were conceptualizing. And unfortunately, we're always kept in the, you know, the back burn. They were in the backlogs. So the goal was to have affordable and low barrier to entry uh, for initiatives. Because the reality is not all endeavors, not all initiatives continue or are successful. So they wanted something that was you know, reasonably priced, uh, reasonably um, had a reasonable cost, uh, and again, a, a low barrier to entry. One of their selected database options was Postgres as well. Uh, and they're keen, and they were keen to have uh, enterprise support due to their business nature, uh, again, banks being highly regulated uh, with really strict compliance uh, requirements. Um, so definitely not an option um, to have something that, that would uh, compromise that, that, you know, that the compliance. So we had several discussions. Uh, we had a POC, proof of concept, and several uh, proof points. Um, and you know, we ended up, uh, or they, they ended up wanting to use it for a chatbot. Um, that will help their customer service team. Since the database was considered new technology in their end, um, ITG worked together with them to design the architecture that fit their requirements. Uh, and we also helped them with day two operational activities. Uh, they, you know, they had a very dedicated uh, and fast learning team, worked very well hand in hand with our team in ITG to ensure database system uh, stability and performance. Uh, they have now expanded their usage to post uh, GIS for geographical information systems and, and, and several other uh, initi initiatives and, and projects. Six use cases, uh, if memory serves me right, four banks, uh, one utility company and uh, a stock exchange. So what's the key takeaway? The first is, is, is the right mindset. Um, we were very fortunate to find customers who had the right mindset, who had the infinite mindset, who realized that they cannot not do anything to change you know, uh, what they do and how they do it. And um, having that right mindset, even if you're 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 a huge enterprise, uh, was was quite critical in, in making in making sure that you know these initiatives uh, took place and were and were successful. Another key takeaway, uh, although we we threw a couple of examples of of different EDB products and, and solutions, is finding the right tools for the right job. And uh, we made a call out here and there to EDB for, for creating amazing solutions. And, and the key thing here is uh, with the right partner, you're able to match the right tools to the right requirements to produce the right results. We like to use the word right. Uh, last but not the least, and I think we, we made mention a bunch of times is really on cost optimization. And the key thing about cost, of course, is you know, 
uh, and we've heard this before, you, you, you get what you pay for, right? Um, the amazing thing with, uh, with the technology, with the EDP technology, is that it, it's, it's priced very well, it produces the results, and you know, if the customer speaks for itself, the results speak for itself. And, and again, we're, we're very pleased not just to talk about results, but you know, the cost it took to, gen, to, to create those results um, have, have all been phenomenal. And um, I would like to extend, uh, obviously, a, a big thank you, not just to our customers, not just to EDB, but also to the ITG team. Um, and, and our database team are actually spearheaded by these two gentlemen, uh, Andre Kusuma, who's our managing director um, based in Indonesia. He essentially is our CTO for platform DevOps and, and database. And of course, uh, our regional technology manager uh, for Southeast Asia is Dennis Bautista. He's based in the Philippines and um, he's not very far from me, although we maintain social distancing. Uh, he's in the room and you know, if you have any questions later on for the Q&A, he'll be more than happy to assist me uh, at a safe distance, of course. And um, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to, to do some knowledge sharing. Uh, I think the, the great part about knowledge is it can be shared and this is a great, uh, great medium for us to share some of that knowledge. Um, the, what we gave you are just examples of, of some of our you know, successful deployments. We don't want to actually call them deploy, deployments. They're, they're more like relationships and, and we built them by, again, we'll, we'll, we'll keep harping on the right, right things, right? They had the right mindset. We were the right partner. We brought in the right technology. It was priced at the right level, uh, and that produced the right results. And uh, now we're seeing, you know, the right relationship really blossom. Uh, and again, the subscriptions are just growing year to year. And um, very, very happy with with where we are, with with our customers, with our partnership with EDB. And um, you know, we invite you to to, to throw any questions. Uh, let me just scroll back to. Uh, to some of the details of the gentlemen who who are who are the real brains, or at least spearhead the brains behind behind all of the success, um, Andre and Dennis. So on that note, uh, we're open for any questions if you have any. Uh, I do have a couple of questions for you. Uh, so uh, one of the questions which came up, it is from Carl. Uh, it's uh, open source steps are, uh, sorry, open source steps as COVID-19 forces instant digital transformations. Is hybrid cloud in, uh, is the future of enterprise IT? How can open source bring businesses together? for the organizations to scale up as response to COVID? So uh, firstly, that's that's a great question. Uh, th thanks for bringing it up. Uh, I, I think part of a uh, bit, bit of a background, part of the mantra of ITG is also to promote open source. Um, and we're, we're huge fans of, of cloud as well, cloud technology. Uh, I'd like to use the use cases as uh, a source of probably my response in terms of open source. Uh, some of the key things that make these initiatives successful, and I want to look at it in, in, in two ways. Firstly, is making the leap to leverage on EDB, and then later on, we, when, once we see the actual results. Customers love the concept of no lock-in. Uh, many of the purists that we speak with uh, in these organizations are also fans of open source. So we speak the same language. Uh, we have the same, I would say, values in, in, in that context. And when they see the results of 
of other use cases of other banks, for example, it allows them to make that leap with more confidence, um, knowing well that you know the risks are, are very well calculated, the benefits are just too glaring to ignore. So they make that jump, they make that leap. Um, and when you see the results, again, using the six use cases that, that we've touched on, it's even just on the cost side of things. Um, again, it's, it's too glaring. It's too obvious um, to just brush, brush away. So, you know, is, is it critical? Is open source and, and hybrid cloud the, the way to go? Absolutely. Um, and if huge organizations, and I would like to call them once traditional organizations, are open to this type of approach, then there's there's no reason for, for other organizations to make the same leap and enjoy the same benefits. Thanks, Vijay, for that one. So I have another one for you. Uh, what are the common pain points in adopting EDD process? Okay, that's that's also uh, a great question. Um, and I'll answer it in, in, in two ways. Uh, first is based on our experience. Uh, data migration or, or migrating from one database to another, uh, back in the day, and, and forgive me, age is catching up, I can't recall <laughs> when exactly um, we started enjoying certain technologies, but in the case of our the energy example, uh, we had to use a, a very outdated and old school technique of, of doing analysis, of doing migration, and it it took too long. Uh, it was it was quite painful, and it was it was just a challenge to to be able to do a full analysis, full assessment. Of, of EDB, of Postgres. Uh, it took us six months, very painful process. Um, I think Dennis grew a lot of white hair. Good news for him, he still has hair, so, you know, he's still a leg up. Um, but now we are enjoying the migration tool of, of EDB that allows us to do the same thing that took us six months uh, I, I think it allows us to do it in minutes. Um, so that that in itself is is amazing. So that addresses that particular pain point. The other pain point that we encounter is uh, training, and you know how are how are uh, the database administrators or the database professionals how are they able to embrace this technology and you know, it's all about training. It's all about enablement. Um, it's all about certification as well. And uh, EDB, we have a great relationship with EDB and, and we're quite proud of that. Uh, we're able to come up with different training programs. We're able to uh, address certification requir requirements. Um, and I think that addresses the second part of, of that Again, the challenges of, of moving to an EDB environment. So in terms of tools, new tools are being introduced. Um, in terms of training, EDB is big on training. Um, ITG is big on training. So, so that, that addresses that question as well. Great. Uh, actually, uh, so I do have uh, uh, for, uh, another one from CARD, I believe. Uh, many organizations are embracing an approach to modernize IT, and the benefits of replacing legacy infrastructure are clear, including redundancy, oh. including uh, reduced cost and increased business agility. But modernizing IT can mean different things to different IT leaders, and the reason behind it can be really from, really from business to business. How can EDB and ITG help us navigate during this period? 
Well, I'd, I'd like to recognize the fact that uh, you need good partners and you need good technologies. And uh, I, I think, and I'd like to address this question by, by uh, highlighting that customers who want to take the initiative to introduce, you know, dig digital transformation. They want to replace uh, outdated technologies. They want to change how they do things and introduce new and leading technologies. You know, you, you can have a marriage of, of the great technologies that EDB brings to the table. Um, and, and without sounding like uh, plugging our organization, par partner with the right uh, solution provider. Um, and lastly is, again, a customer that embraces the need for change, embraces leading technologies, um, and someone who, you know, who can work very closely with with partners, uh, take ownership and, and really drive their own internal di digital transformation. So it, it's always a, a you know a three way relationship. Great, uh, thanks you for that answer. I guys, I think we are out of time now, and uh, thank you all for joining in. Thanks, VJ, for the great presentation which you did, and I hope this was useful for everyone on the call. Thanks, guys. Thank you for joining, and have a great day. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe.